All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Heather Lamb, and I am the education consultant out of Texas. And normally, um, Tara joins me, Tara Mattingly. She is up in Maryland, but she had something come up. So I'm going to do all of this by myself today. So we're going to hopefully have a great experience and learn lots of things and um, not have any technology woes. So <laughs> I'm excited um, for this, uh, this session since we skip, started skipping every other month. Um, I know some of you are probably pretty antsy to, to learn some cool things. So hopefully I'm, I'm going to give you some ideas and um, things that you can take back and, and customize. But the ideas are going to be something that I think you'll be able to, to use. Um, I did, as the screen shows, I have created some resources. Um, the, the one that we're going to focus in on today is um, the, I'm going to share with you the, the Spring Fun one, and I'm going to talk through it. And then there's a My Community. So I have parts um, of the My Community that I will um, that we'll use today, and then also use some of the Smart Exchange pieces. So I'm going to try to make this as easy for you as possible. Um, if you um, can introduce, continue introducing, we have a small but I think mighty group here. And um, what I'd like to know, first of all, is if you can tell me um, kind of what your knowledge is. I know um, Tanya has um, already said that she knows little about the smart table, but the rest of you, if you can introduce yourself to me and then just tell me kind of where your knowledge level is, um, and then hopefully I can help um, you to better know about the table. But continue doing that. Um, and then I've also put in that there is a question box that we'll talk about that you can put your um, comments to me and also the questions. Um, we don't have a back channel only because it gets to be a lot of information. And I want you to focus on really building a great activity pack. So let's get started. And I'll come back to um, that if you need it, that, that GOO page. Um, I did put it into the box out there to everyone, um, the link. So hopefully you'll be, have a chance to download that. If you don't, if you just want to watch, that's OK as well. And then you can go back and download that and practice. We do post all of our resources. And I'll talk about that as well. Hi, Andre from Quebec. Glad, glad that you're here today. Um, so, so keep introducing yourself and, and tell me, um, you know, what your knowledge level is. What we're going to do is some of our same things. I'm not going to do as much about the, the, the um, support documents, but I did want to remind people where they're at. And then um, we are going to build, I'm going to show you how easy it is to build an activity pack. And so I'll have some tips and tricks for that and um, talk about the smart exchange and activity packs and applications, um, the course park resources, and then an update the sessions. So when our next session is going to be, you can always, I put this little um, down here at the bottom, you can always find um, pretty much current information um, from the info.smarttech.com smart table VUG. So the virtual user group, I post all the resources, or I post the videos to the smart um, so my YouTube channel. And then I have um, we also started posting the resources, and I need to do my due diligence and post some of them that I know are missing. So um, so that's that's kind of where that great thing is. Um, oh, okay. So Andre, you have some. Okay, well, we'll maybe we can tackle some of those third-party developer apps. So we'll, we'll talk about some of those. Um, this is me, and Tara usually is here with me, and our, we're smart education consultants. As I said, I'm from Texas, and I've been working with the table for. Gosh, probably the very first iteration of the table. Um, and so just seeing the cool things that can happen, the great experiences in the classrooms. And, you know, it's one of those pieces of um, technology that is a great complementary piece to your classroom, whatever is happening, whether or not you have a smart board. We do have, um, we do have, schools that don't have smart boards, they have other things, or they don't have any interactive whiteboards, and it's a great piece. So hi, Tina. And um, 
you're in the right place because you want to learn more about using the toolkit. So I hope that I provide some good things for you there. So as I talked about the YouTube channel, I do post all those on there. So you can go back and watch some of those sessions. There are, um, and I just haven't had the time, there are some activity um, how-tos um, how to build, but they're a little dated. Um, and some, some of the basic messaging is good, but they're a little dated, and I need to update those. It's just a time thing. So I left them there just to help you. There's a lot of resources, and you can watch um, some of the past sessions. So I encourage you to do that. Why do we do this every month? Well, I basically, um, really, it's to, to develop you know, your skill set, but also sharing best practices. So I'm going to share something with you, a best practice from a school up in Tacoma that's kind of nice. So if you have schools that are looking um, or you're part of a school that's looking to get a table or get more tables, you might be able to use this, this knowledge. They're having some great success in a proof of concept. And then also network. So I'll talk about the, the May session and um, what I'm looking for. So you've already kind of figured that out. Um, there is a question panel. If you need to move that, there's a little arrow that you can move to the side. So if you need to collapse that, um, you can get that out of the way and then pop it out when you need to ask a question. I always invite people, if you want to raise your hand and you want to ask the questions verbally, please do that. Um, you do need a, um, your computer mic set up. So, and you can always, um, Press on that little um, raise your hand, and you can always put it down if you accidentally do that. But it, we encourage that and during this kind of, because it is the idea behind a virtual user or user group is really those conversations. And so the best way to do that in this type of environment is raising the hand. But questions work, so keep those questions coming. And so I'm going to start off, because in May, what I'd like to know is, um, how are you using your table and your ideas and sharing? So the end, there's a poll, and I've tapped into a few people about sharing some things. It's just been a timing thing. So I would love in May, this is going to be kind of your time to shine, but I want to share with you, this is a school in Tacoma, and I will share this notebook file. So a school in Tacoma, I helped one of our salespeople to develop a proof of concept document, and so um, I, I can share that, but basically what they've done is they're working um, with, you can see the students with disabilities and those with, without. And so I'm not going to watch it today, but if you click on this, there's actually a video whoops, um, that goes through some of the achievements for it. So I encourage you, you can, if you're antsy to see this before the file gets out, you can just do a Google search and do um, Tacoma Schools and Smart Table, and I, I, that's how I found it. So it's a really nice piece of some um, some neat things that are happening up that way, up into in the you know western side. So a nice a nice really great um, uh, movie about it. So I encourage you to look at that. Um, and then in May, we want to hear some of your best practices. So I know there's a lot of things happening, but I want to hear from you. So be thinking about that. And, you know, it could be a tip or a trick. That's what I'm going to look for in May. Um, I want to remind everyone that, that about these documents. So I did, um, I did post... Um, inside of the inside of the um, Dropbox folder I did put the the support documents and I encourage you I'm going to go through this in an hour we can only do so much but what I encourage you to do is really to download this um, maybe not print it out but download the the smart table user's guide you find it from the support um, link if you go to software downloads it's not in the resources tab it's in the software downloads tab so if you haven't done that already I highly encourage you um, to do that because this is probably going to be for for this particular product this is probably going to be your best friend as far as learning about the table and learning about the toolkit so I went to the smart table toolkits really one user's guide whoops um, let me go back to here. I'm in the wrong place. Notice I went to the smart table. I'm going to go um, to, I guess that's where I went, related documents. Here we go, related documents, and here is the user's guide right here. 
And I encourage you to do that because some of the things that I'm going to talk about are really in more detail here. So we're going to talk about those third-party applications. So Andre, you talked about having some problems. If you haven't downloaded that activity or this user's guide yet, this might be um, a help to you. But it really goes into some deeper, like how to use, how to download, things like that. Um, so I highly encourage you to do that if you haven't done that um, yet. All right. So let's keep going along. The other thing that I want to remind people is that the the table has been the table software. The, the um, toolkit is version 2.6.114, I believe. But the table software, this, this picture doesn't depict it, but it is version 3.1. So um, if you do have a um, somewhat new table that's just been shipped, it's probably still running version 2.6. If you connect it to the web, you can actually get this check for updates icon right here. And um, you can do all of that if you're connected to the web. If you don't have your table connected, then you can download this from that same website and put it on the USB, plug it in, and it'll prompt you to say, hey, looks like an update is, is out there. So it'll run through the whole thing, remove everything that it doesn't need, and then place everything that it does, and then run through some like languages and things like that. There's been some, a couple of people have emailed me and asked me about, like, am I going to have to update Notebook and things like that. So the table actually runs a different version of Notebook. So you don't have to, you don't have to um, do anything about Notebook, um, do anything that, um, like updating the table software, you'll see on your on when you're on the table, you'll see that there isn't there's an icon for notebook, but notebook runs within the toolkit, which we'll talk about in a bit. But so you don't have to worry about downloading anything extra. Um, it's just that version will will get you where you need to be. And and really, if you have questions as I go along, please I'm gonna do I've got my um, screen split so I can keep up with the questions since I don't have anybody helping me. So I'm gonna keep hopefully um, stop me if you have a question. Um, if you can always tell which version of the toolkit that you have by going to on, this is a picture from the table, um, going to the teacher mode and selecting that smart table icon, and then it'll tell you which version and and whether or not there's an update. So anything higher than 2.6, you'll get that check for update option right here. But if it's lower than that, you really have an older version, and it would be beneficial to update because you're going to get some screen some different kinds of options that are better as far as sharing the table, the, the, um, some of those pieces that are in that, that later version. So I encourage you to update your table. I also want, so with version 3.1, one of the things that's different is Scrapbook, which is this, the application with the letter A, and Symphony are part of what we call the default content. So those won't run independently. So you'll need to, what I mean by that, you'll need to put them into an activity pack to be able to use them. So when you try to download them, it'll say something like there's a later version or some message that comes up. So you'll need to put them into an activity pack. And this is an activity pack right here. This activity pack is called Example Content. If you go out to the Smart Exchange, so let me get back here, and whoops, I'm already at the Smart Exchange, and I search for Example Content. Notice I'm logged in. Here it is right here. So Example Content, anytime you see the HD little banner in the upper um, right hand corner that means this the activity pack has been optimized or been um, updated for the new smart table the 442i so anytime you see that and you're and you'll know that that you're going to have it and optimized so that the images everything's been optimized for the new smart table 442i you can, if you say, well, I wonder which, which activity packs are updated, you can do a search for HD right here. Uh-oh. So 
Your table appears to be frozen. Tanya. All right. On the program right now. So you're, you're, are you, so Tanya, you're working on your table right now. So it might be, it could be frozen, but it might be trying to think about something. So come back to me and let me know. Um, if it is, you might, um, you might need to um, restart it or re-unplug it or unplug it. So if you're working on your table, because we're not going to build anything on the table, we actually build with the toolkit on our computer. But you can, um, you and I may want to after this, we can have an offline conversation. So um, I'm going to keep going and then let me know um, about that. So let me see. All right. So anything? So you can see there are. If I scroll down. There are 536 activity packs, I can see that over here on the side, that have been optimized with that HD on the, in the top bo um, border on the side. So just a, just a hint on, on that. So sometimes you'll have activity packs that have kind of the black thing on the side. Those are the ones that were probably created for the 230i, the previous table. They still work great. It's just that we've been able to optimize some of them. Right. Let's keep going on. So here's here's what we're going to be doing now. So um, we're going to talk about building a smart table activity pack from a high level, and then we're going to. So I'm going to show you something. I'm going to kind of talk you through it. But I've given you some resources as well to help you, and then we're going to actually kind of build one. So I'm going to start off showing you the spring fun one and kind of dissecting it and then I'm going to show we're actually going to build this one this this community one or I'm going to talk you through some of the ways to do that so if you downloaded that activity pack called um, the the folder that I had there's one inside now you'll have to have the smart table toolkit which this is the Smart Table Toolkit, and I've already opened this on my computer. So on your, if you if you don't have, let me minimize this um, and show you the Smart Table Toolkit looks like this. So you can see this on my little desktop. It's the Smart. I'm not running the table software. The table software goes on my computer, but this is the toolkit. The thing about the toolkit is you can have one instance of it open at a time. So you should have a folder that I downloaded, um, and you should have in. Whoops, not that one. Oh, here it is. You have one very similar, and then inside of it, there is a Spring Fund dot table content file. That's what I have opened up right now. So when I, if I go back, what I said before is um, think themes. So you've maybe you've downloaded some activity packs from the Smart Exchange, and you're ready to kind of dabble in creating your own. So I think downloading, I, I don't like to create anything from scratch. So there's two sides of the, of the spectrum of that. You could download something, and then you can customize with the knowledge that I'm going to give you today, and I'll give you some kind of some caveats to it. But think themes. So don't think just one lesson. Think themes. So the spring one is called Spring Fun. That's my theme is Spring Fun. So if I start looking at this as a whole, you can see that it's got a background that I created. If you're interested in the parts of this one, I can send that to you. I've, I've got all those. But I create parts. The parts of the things I either create backgrounds in PowerPoint, which we'll look at. I create them in Notebook if you have them. I create them in Paint. You can even use backgrounds that are pre-created. So backgrounds, it's almost like I'm creating in layers. So I've got my spring fun, that's a layer, that's the bottom layer. And then if I look over here, I've got applications. Notice I don't have any third party applications, so I have a new computer, so I haven't added anything yet. These are all just default applications that when I update the software, these, these will um, be there for me. So I just downloaded the software actually, and that's that's what shows up. So if you need to, if you don't have Symphony and Scrapbook, I would recommend to uninstall the toolkit that you have and reinstall it and you will get Symphony and Scrapbook as one of your default applications. So I also have access to the online activity pack, so this gets me right into the Smart Exchange, which is a good way shortcut. 
I also, when I select and say, oh, I'm going to have Edition Plus, I get tabs up here. So I've got all of these tabs that correspond to the side. Here's a little hint. If I left click on, say, Media, it will actually take me to that tab. So I don't have to, I don't have to go to the tabs at the top. So I'm just going to dissect this a little bit for you, and then we'll, we'll see how it works. So the first tab, so I, I have Spring Fun. So I, the first tab that I selected was called Edition Plus. I've got question text where I can put in my questions. You know, the table has a touch in here um, component. So if I needed to read that text, spell that text, or import audio, I can do that. So if I have some preliterate or some non-readers, or maybe some students that need that, that verbal um, language development, they need to hear and see things, you could do that. So I could go in here and I can import, and then I get a little microphone here. I can immediately let me change this, and I can start recording and say, count the pedals. And then when I, I could play it. And then I can attach it. So now there becomes a WAV file that's associated. So when they first open up this activity, it's going to say, count the pedals. The next part, so that's, so I created a question, count the pedals. I have my question text. This picture right here, I just got by going to the Smart Exchange. And we're going to do all this. I just want to kind of talk you through some of these. So I imported that from the gallery. I just brought that in. It was simple. It was easy. And then I, I had it. I didn't have to really create anything. Notice the little um, bars on the side, which is fine. The last, the last step is step two, select the counting options. So the idea with this activity is you'll get little little blocks that you can do a one-to-one -one relationship with. Well, my kids for this, the, the idea with this was with this was for pre-K. So actually, I created this for a, a group of kids that were ages two to four and or five. And so they needed some really, really low-level stuff because that's where they're at. So they don't know how to count by fives yet. So I deselected all of these. And so they only have blocks that are ones. I'm going to make this so I'm going to make this a little smaller so I clicked on that little button right here so I can show the bottom the other thing is is that when you do instructions the instructions will go for every set of questions so I might just say counting practice here just because everything's going to be counting and then I can do an audio um, support and then what I want to do is I have count the petals and I have count the flowers so I'm going to preview it. So probably most of you aren't, don't have the luxury of having a table at home. So you might um, be doing this at home or somewhere else in that where you're not with your table and you want to see what it's all about. So this is a really nice feature because it will actually act what exactly like the table. Now, not all of them will do exactly what the table and the table, you could set it up for four learners. But you see what's happening, so you can see whether or not your activity pack and your activity has been set up correctly. So I have count the petals, and then when I have the right number, I'm going to get that little validation. It's pretty simple, and then it will automatically go to that, that next activity. So that just happens on your computer. Go back here. Um, one of the things that, um, so that's that preview option. You can also preview it. You can see how the lesson's going to be displayed. So, so that's, a, that's a nice feature to have. You can resort if I say, oh, I really want the flowers to be, um, or petals to be underneath that. You can do that so you could do some scaffolding if you needed to after you have it set up. So that's really a nice, um, really easy, simple way to create an activity that's an, this addition plus active application. Hotspots is a, basically kind of the same thing. I created a background and then we have a space that's hot right here. So hot spaces, if I preview it, you'll see, let's see, there we go, oops, I have it two times. 
So this is letters and number matching. So I, my second one was numbers. So I would drag these in. Notice that the little visual right here is will go around. I can put that in, and if it's wrong, that's a moth. So we would have some conversations about that. So that visual right here, if you want, depending on the age of your students, you may not want that visual. So I would uncheck that. So they would have to get all of the items, the right items in, before you get any visual feedback for that. So that's, that's a nice thing. So no. So Avril, no, the ability to make a background in the toolkit, not that I know of. That great question. So you have to make the backgrounds outside. So Avril has a great question about at making the, the backgrounds within the toolkit. So it's not really a wizard. It's more of a drag and drop. So you have to do things outside and you drag and drop. That's a really great question. Um, so as far as I know, that's, I, that's not anywhere. But definitely, if you haven't already submitted that, um, that's a great question to submit. Here's my second activity. You can see that it's counting and, and what it is. So we'll get into this, but if you want to try this out, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a different perspective on things that you can do um, with it. So if you want to try this out, you have it, and you can practice with it, or you can add to it. Here's another one. I took a variation of this, so the ants go marching. So this is called Hot Spots. Um, yeah, so so Avril has a great point, and then we're doing is that you make the background first. So in just a minute, you'll see. So over here is your background because she has a great point to make the background first. You want to drag it in because you create these spaces based on your background. Um, and if you just have like a blank background, you there's you don't really have a guide and I like creating backgrounds so that kind of associate. So really, really important for hot spaces and hot spots. You can see that my background, my little my little labels are on here. So the idea behind this one is this this is the difference between hot spots and hot spaces. So you have you would drag these in and you you are matching the dots. So I think you kind of get the idea. Media, I've got a, a document that I'm going to share with you. Media, you won't see the, the video, but what I did with this video is I went on online um, and I used a program called Zamzar, Z-A-M-Z-A-R, and I converted this video to, it ha the videos have to be an ABI or a WMB, and I converted this one to an ABI. So it's the time lapse of a radish seed going. And then the kids would use the life cycle of a bean. So this, this particular school was planting a garden. Multiple choice is you step one, count the legs, count the ladybugs, and then those are three different. And then what happens on the table, depending on how, how uh, many students you have, it, this will actually create the answers for you. You can have answers that are images, or you can have dots that are image, um, that are answers. So it's up to you. Narrow it down is a, prun, a fun little game that's like a guess who game. So I have a document that kind of explains this. And then I wanted to share with you this notebook. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually use 3D tools. Um, so hot spaces and hot spots. So hot spaces is um, this. So hang on just a second, um, Tanya. If um, I think it's I, I let's go through it before you leave. So it's nothing about this. So let's go through it if you have the the toolkit loaded. So hot spaces. I'm just showing you the the ideas and hot spots. So um, it's it's not real hard. There's just different naming conventions. But I want before we go and before we start to make one, it's really drag and drop. So it's really not that hard. Um, so the smart notebook file. So if I go out to here, I have 3D tools on my computer. And so a lot of people don't realize that you actually, the table, can use 3D. So it's already ready for 3D. So I put a notebook file inside of that Spring Fun 
file that actually will look like this. So I'm running a preview copy of Notebook 14. And this might get on your table is the ability. So this is three-dimensional. So the students could actually take this over in the corners so you wouldn't have the toolbar over in the corner in the user's guide actually explain this. But you don't have, you have the ability to have a pen and then an eraser. But those are some, in the user's guide, this actually explains this. There's a little palette right here. And then the kids can actually come in and count the legs. But the table is 3D ready. And you, it's not an extra purchase. It just has that available. So this activity pack actually includes that. So you could download that and put it on your table right now and, and play with it. And then if you wanted to customize it, you could. All right, so what we're going to do is let me open up. So let me not save that. So I'm going to go back and let me go back into my, so I'm going to close out of this folder here. And I'm going to close out of this. And I'm going to go back in. And what we're going to do is in the My Community, um, we're going to create this I'm going to show you at a high level, and then we'll open up the toolkit. And those of you that have it, we're just going to create one really simple. So this is what a blank um, toolkit looks like until you have it open. So this is what we're going to do today in the next few minutes. We're just going to just very, very basic. So I've given you the parts, but I wanted to show you some ideas um, and ways that you can use this. So this is kind of what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to have Addition Plus. We're going to have hot spaces, hot spots, media, and multiple choice. So remember, addition plus is counting blocks. So they're going to count the signs. Um, and I've got a background that was created that I'll open up. Hot spaces has places that are, are hot. So I used my neighborhood. And I just took a picture of Google, um, a Google map. And I placed, so this is a, a high school across the street from me. This is my house. This is the fire station, and this is the library. And then I made another one, girls and boys, that you can add, add kids' pictures. Um, hot spots is that same idea of the counting ants, but we're going to count how many houses are receiving mail. And I just made a background. Media, I just these are just pictures that students, it's kind of like the iPad app. Notice I didn't use make a background here. And then multiple choice is the little adding um, thing. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to, if you are joining along with me, then I want you to um, open up a blank notebook file. And if you're just going to watch along, so if you're watching this after the fact, you can go and download that activity pack and then um, actually watch and do at the same time. You may just want to watch me today and then practice. But if you're, if you're willing, I'll go slow enough so you can ask me questions. So, so the first thing is, is that we have to, we want a background for our, um, our, our, um, basic thing that shows up on the table. So this is this is the activity pack background, the student mode. And so to make this easy, I didn't create a background. What I did is I went right up to the top, this import from the gallery. So I have to be on the internet. And I'm just going to type in here community. And when you when you type community, I found this little this little circle of friends that I thought, huh, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to select on that, whoops, and I'm going to click OK. It's going to give me the option of what I want to do, and I want to crop this. So I'm just going to drag this down. And you know what's nice about this is it says community right here. So I just left it, to make it easy for you guys, I just left it like that. So there's, there's not much to this. So there's my first, I made my first background. Pretty easy, and it says community on it. When you build on the smart table, you want to build, um, remember that the table is a horizontal surface and a kind of a 360 degree design. So you don't want to build top down. Now this one is a little top down, but it's it'll be okay for what our purposes are. If you have a background, which we do, we're going to use the folder for, for one of our activity packs um, applications. So there's my first background. 
So the other thing that we need is now we need to have applications, things that the students are going to interact and work with. So I had in here, um, I believe I had Addition Plus, and I had Hot Spaces. So remember the spaces are hot, so kids are going to drag and drop. Um, So I also so I, thanks Al. <laughs> so <laughs> if you if you you want to be in full screen, that's a great point. So make sure that you're clicking, otherwise you won't see the bottom like you didn't see. So when I opened this up, I didn't see the bottom. So if you don't see the bottom of your of your little where it says directions, click on that little middle bar. Or if you're in on a Mac, you can do the same thing on a Mac. So I have the software loaded on my Mac right now just to play with it to see you know the differences you can just go to full screen. I'm also going to have hot spots so we'll work on that. Um, yeah thanks it took me a while too it still takes me a while um, and media is one that we're going to use and um, not smart notebook for this one so that's all we're going to do right now I think is those four applications so we're going to start off um, with an easy one. Yes, so Patricia, you can. So you can make activities on the Mac and then transfer them. So the, the software is cross-platform. Great question. The software is cross-platform, cross so it doesn't really matter. Um, you can open them up just like Notebook is. They're cross-platform, so there have been many applications that I've created on my Mac and then opened it up on my um, Windows side or on my PC. So, all right, great question. So we're going to click on Addition Plus. And in my, in my, if I go up, I'm going to scroll this down just a little bit and notice that I have a couple of things that I'm going to do. So the first thing is, is I'm going to make this um, signs for my community. So they're going to count. That was the first activity that I have. So I'm going to I'm going to, this is my first activity, and I'm going to say um, count, whoops, let me see, I think I needed to, let me delete that, and let me add one back, oops, let's see, I should be able to do that, or maybe not, maybe it just has question list, I thought I had a list over there, and I'm going to say, oh, there it goes, counting, sorry, counting, so, counting the signs is what I want to type here. If I wanted to, it, you, I wouldn't probably do it today because just for time, but you could come back and you can remember import your own, like record your own voice if you needed to, but for time I'm not going to do this. I have, so let me minimize and talk about backgrounds for just a second. So I created this background in PowerPoint and then I saved it as a notebook file. So I opened up and I created this in PowerPoint. You can create your backgrounds in any format, paint, anything you want. So you can create a background. What's nice about PowerPoint is you can actually, if you didn't know this, you can do a file save as and when you save it, you can save it not as a PowerPoint presentation, but you can save it as a JPEG or a PNG, which those two, it'll actually read. I have best luck with JPEGs or PNG, but it will read TIFFs, it will read bitmaps, and it will, will read GIFs. But I like to keep with JPEGs and PNGs. So when I do that, if I say OK, and then I say Save, I, it will say, um, and I'm at, Mike, I can make a whole bunch of backgrounds, and then I just want that one. So it, it created it created a background from this. So that's a really easy way. If you're familiar with Smart Notebook, you can. So I have, if I go to that folder, I can do the same thing in Smart Notebook. So this will open up, and I can do a file and export. But but. Some people may not have Smart Notebook. Um, you do get a license of Smart Notebook if, if you have a Smart Notebook to our um, people in Calgary, and they can give you, or actually you can download Smart Notebook 11 right now, so you don't need to code anymore. But this was, if I do this in Notebook, so this is, this is just a Notebook file, and I can do File and Export, and I can export as an image file, and it can export, here's my choices again, 
Um, and then I like to choose if it's a background 1024 by 768 so I can make sure that it's spread across um, the screen and not like stretchy and distorted. So that's another way. So PowerPoints I can do file save as and notebook files I do file export. So I already gave you one so you don't really have to do that. So if you go and you click on the import from a file and I go find that wherever you downloaded that folder. And here is my community edition plus. Whoopsie. And here is that JPEG. Remember that cropping feature? And I can crop. I'm going to. And what's nice about this is if it's not centered, I can use these little handles and kind of center that. So I don't really have to worry about what it looks like. Notice on here, the reason I put those edges, the words on the edge, is because I said a minute ago about the horizontal surface. So kids are not standing and looking from the top down. They're from the side. So I could have put the words on this side or this side. But this is my background image. So not as important in, in Addition Plus, but you'll see in just a second, more important for hot spaces and hot spots, those applications. My last step is to choose which what I want to use as tokens. So I'm going to use blocks today, and my kiddos are definitely not, have they have not been um, versed in counting this high. So I'm just going to use the, the one blocks. The answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to change the answer to 12. And then I can decide, do I want all the students to have access to all of them, or each student have access to a subset? You know, that's not probably as important at this age, but as you get older, that might be a, a token distribution might be um, important. And then Avril reminded, again, um, well, she reminded earlier, but I wanted to, to make sure that you can see that preview button. And so basically, I can preview this. And here is my little counting tokens. And so all the kids would then count. And and I keep doing the validation is automatic, so I don't change that. So my theme is my community. Oops, I missed one. Oh, there it is. And I got all these signs from the Smart Exchange, so I didn't have to take them. And that's it. So that was hot, or that was addition plus. Really simple. You can add more to it, but I wanted to really to get a lot of people struggle with building and a lot of people are ready to build. So hot, um, let's go to an easier one and then we'll come back to hot spaces. So let's go to hot spots. So hot spots um, is we have space, like we have dots, we have spaces and like spots that are hot. So it's kind of a matching. So the what we're going to be doing with this, if I go back to my folder, let's go back here, and I'm going to do hot, and I have the mail deliveries. So I've given you a background, and what I did was I created this, um, I think I created this in PowerPoint, and I gave you the PowerPoint, and then I exported it. So if you wanted to change it, you could go in and export it. So all these pictures, some of these I got off of Google, and I just made sure that the, the sharing was okay. Um, but you have the PowerPoint here if you wanted to customize that a little bit. So let's do, so we're first so we have activity one. So we, um, I'm going to say who's got mail. I should probably say who's got mail. Um, and then second step is to create my background. So I'm going to Go right here, go back to my desktop, that folder. It won't, unfortunately, it doesn't go back to the same place. I don't know if that's a toolkit, but you have to kind of navigate each time, which is kind of a, a pain, but it, you do, that's what you have to do. So I'm going to have hot spots, and then here's my JPEG. Looks pretty good. I don't need to even crop it. I'm just going to keep it as it is, and there it is. So I have options. I could 
I could have gone here and I could do matching if I wanted to and find images. So notice I have the same options here. I can do a copy and paste. Um, that's how to get the images there um, by things that I have, things that I want to use from the gallery, things that are in the gallery um, that I that maybe I want to you know, parts of. I can't do much cropping. I can do a little bit. I can't resize. So you have to do a lot of that outside of it. But if you have some pictures you want to bring in, you could do that. Since this is a simple counting activity, I'm just going to use this little label button right here. So notice that I, I have in position and start position, because but they're grayed out right now. As soon as I add a label, it's going to say label one. So I'm going to place this, and right now it says in position. So this is going to create my in position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on each one of these and get enough labels. So you're going to type some answers in here. So I'm just clicking. And I'm going to get, so each one of these little houses is going to have a label. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on it and just, and so I have to double click and it highlights it. If you double click and you click off of it, then you have to, if you click on here and then you do something, just double click back again. And, and then if you delete it or need to delete it, you can just highlight it and, and, and then um, double click inside of it. Whoops, let's see. Two, oops, that's not right. So I have to highlight that again. And then, let's see, that's not right either. Five, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There we go. I could add, once again, I have that audio support. I could do questions. So, you know, maybe I wanted to increase the houses or something, or maybe I want to count mailman, you know, whatever. Just trying to think with that, that community theme. So if I preview this, what happens with this now, oops, I forgot to do something. Notice how it scattered everything kind of out? Well, it's because I didn't tell it where I wanted my start position. So that was good. So, so these, I, I could keep it like that, but um, what I'm going to do is I'll show you once and then I'll do this again. So the kids have to negotiate, and once it gets into the spot, it turns orange. So what I forgot to do was tell it my start position. So I may want to place all these little labels into a pile somewhere so they're a little more organized than just scattered all over the place. So there, I think I got them. Now let me preview again. Much better. And then they can work on that. Not really hard. It's just it's a matter of really dragging and dropping. But as Avril said earlier, having your background, and you can't build your background in the toolkit. You have to build it outside like I've demonstrated. And then you, um, and then you add the features and the functionality when you're when you we've got all the parts so if I wanted to if I wanted to find the number one I could have used this so here's a number one from the exchange or there's some cute number ones you know some flowery ones these are all coming from the smart exchange so lots of ways to say one so if I wanted I could use this and that could be my one also so that I really wanted two though so you have some options. So that's hot spots. And then so hot spot is a spot that's hot. Hot spaces is a space that's that's kind of a space that's hot that kids are going to drag things into. So on hot spaces, I once again I made a background. So let me go back here and I've got a folder. Um, and Hmm, I thought I updated. Let's see. I may have put it into something, and then I'll show you the last one. But um, I think I decided I'd show you which one I did for the, the community, and then I'll add that back into the folder. I think I took it out and did something with it. But what this is, is this is my friends. So these little girls and boys are going to be the space that's, that's hot. 
and I gave a notebook file. I'll update that and give you the PowerPoint as well if you want it. Um, so let me minimize that. So the first thing is, is I'm going to call this girls and boys. And remember, I have to create my background first. So I'm going to go into that folder. I'm going to go to my desktop. You're going to, wherever you downloaded your folder. And here's my, and then I'm going to drag this and make this bigger, but it's, I'm going to make that just a little bit so it's a little more centered in the page. Just a couple of little tips and tricks. Click OK. And there's my background right there. So hot space is a little tricky, but um, if you'll watch first, and then I'll give you a couple of seconds. So if I click on here, um, I'm, I'm going to have a kind of a rectangle-y shape. So I'm going to start with my little arrow, and I'm just going to drag this across, and that's going to make my space hot. Now, what I have a tendency to do is start trying to move this. So I'm going to click on the arrow, and then I can move it. If you click and make, so if you don't do this and you try to move this, you're going to make another space. So what I'm going to do is click off of that, delete that space, and get rid of it. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole bunch of spaces that are hot. So I'll click on the space. And then there's my little space that's hot. From here, I can have, um, go back to my desktop and my little folder and go into my community. Here's my kids. So here's a kind of a cool little trick. Um, you can actually shift and click or on the Mac, I'm not sure how you do this, but you can drag and drop and choose all of the pictures that you want. If you drag all of them, so I'm going to drag and, and go across. Watch what's going to happen with this. If I click open, I'm going to just go ahead and click open on all of these. So instead of going through step by step by step, that's just a little trick. Um, and notice that I got that little background that's not supposed to be a background in an object. I'm just going to delete that out. So I have boys and girls. Thanks, Diane. All right, so that's a boy and there's a girl. And then, so now all I have to do is preview it. And, oops, I did the same thing. I put those in the spots. I forgot to say the starting and the ending. I think you get the idea. Um, hopefully this has helped you. Even Tanya, um, if that's um, helped you to, you know, I would definitely look at the, the Smart Exchange to look at what people have done. Um, another one that I have that's, so I want to go in here and do my start position and make those better. I, can, I have some pictures that I just got off the exchange of some cartoony kids, but you, you know, if, if, you have, if you're a teacher, you could have your own kids' pictures there, which is kind of nice. But I did, I did the, the Google one was my community, and so all I did with that one is I just took a screenshot of um, a Google, of, of, I went and did a Google Maps, and let me find that. I think it's in here. I thought it was. Hmm. It might be on my desktop. Let's just see where that is. I'm not sure where I put that. In a good place, I'm sure. But let's see. It's in here. Nope. Darn it. Well, it's it's on that one, and so it's um it's the background is just a, a screenshot of um, what I what I want to share is what that is. Let's see where that I put that. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll have to find that, and I'll share that again out. So that helps you hopefully to see just kind of where you're at. Um, some of the things I've done is start with worksheets as ideas. Um, get you want to gather all your resources, and that kind of leads me to this. So in the notebook file that I'll share, there's an activity plan sheet that you might want to use to kind of think about your themes and stuff. 
that's that's a really good idea that's in here. I also created that I've actually put into the folder. Let me go over here and find this. So I made this document to kind of help you. So there's a, another plan sheet, a little more um, details that will help you to kind of understand what all of the different um, planning recommendations are. So talk about the sound files, what they can be, and then what each of the default applications. Hopefully I did, I've updated this today. So hopefully I've um, helped, will help you. That will be in your file um, to see just kind of what it can do, what can the kids do. Scrapbook and um, puzzle, will, it's non-customizable. And what I mean by that is when you add that, to your, if I added um, puzzle, and I clicked on puzzle, it's not customizable from here. They can interact with it. Same thing with scrapbook and symphony. So if I click on scrapbook, scrapbook is a way to add assets and create little scrapbooks. And symphony is a really cool, neat way to add fun music that you can ex actually export your own MIDI files, the, the MIDI sound files. So kind of fun. So that, that Word document might help you to understand it. There is a, there's a piece at the end. So when you start thinking about activity packs, it's kind of that theme, to determine your grade level, support the theme, and then gather your resources. And then you can create this and say, well, this is what I want to do, and this is the objective or your standards or your common core. And it, it's, this is kind of that idea. So just a reminder. Um, so yeah, so the um, so it's it is hard to work by yourself. So I'd love to see let's see scrapbook. I think I might try to create a recording of it. Um, that's a good thing. I wanted to before everybody leaves. Um, everybody leaves, I wanted to let you know there's a couple of new apps that are pretty fun that, that are not, not down, I mean, they're downloadable, but they are not customizable. And they're called, um, one of them's called Slingshot. So if I go to Smart Table Activity uh, app Applications and do Newest First, there is this one called Animal Mechanical Slingshot. So the idea is that the kids have to sling like marbles, but the the background is different compositions and the marbles are different compositions. So kind of cool. There's a Gears one. These are all free to download. So you can download it, put that on your USB and then um, find it on the table or you can download them straight to the table. So watch some of the past sessions and I kind of talk about that. There's some really neat ones right here. So definitely um, check that out. Don't forget to um, look on the Smart Exchange for those things. Don't forget to look at the Table Users Guide and then also watch the, the Smart Table Friend videos. Don't forget to connect with us after today by, by probably, um, a, in a, give me a couple of days, I'll have all these resources posted with the Google One so you can practice and um, on the Educator to Educator. So you just have to search from coursepark.com and search for educator to educator and the links also um, on a follow-up email so hopefully that helped you today um, last but not least so Andre um, I definitely will allow you to translate um, to in French so no worries about that if you need any resources please let me know um, please feel free to use these resources to help better you but also if you're doing any um, any training or anything like that. So the next session is actually May 26, but that happens to be um, Memorial Day. And although I would love for you to join with me on Memorial Day, I don't think that from the my US folks, I don't know that you want to give up your day. So I bumped it up to May 12th. So we're not going to meet in April. We've been skipping every month, but we're going to meet May 12th. Um, I do the, the I'll work on to see if I could get some modeling of scrapbook. I can definitely see about that. But I look forward to seeing you on May 12th, and this is going to be a best practice kind of session. So thanks for joining. Um, if you do have any questions, please email me at ed to ed um, and watch for a follow-up email with the recording, and then I will pop those other pieces into the folder so that you can practice yourself. Um, thanks for joining, everyone. Um, have a great rest of the day. If you have any questions, like I said, please don't hesitate. And use these resources to help you, or if you're in that position that you're doing training, um, 
use those resources to help others. So I appreciate your attention. I hope that you were able to watch and build your own little um, smart, uh, smart activity pack. You can come back and add some um, other ones if you want as well or delete those. So um, I would, I'll um, talk to you in May. Thanks a bunch.